So a beautiful image of Buckminster Fuller in C60 up on the back there. Now, C60 was discovered in 1985 on a very sensitive instrument called a cluster beam apparatus or a mass spectrometer. And this was exquisitely sensitive. It didn't represent a way of actually making gram quantities of it to give to a chemist and say, you know, work out the chemistry of this thing. The actual way of making this molecule was very, very simple. This is a picture of me and a student called Armit Sarkar. And here, I think you can just about see there's a glass bell jar. And what you do to make C60 is you basically take two carbon rods and you bring them close together and you put a large electrical current through them and vaporize those carbon rods to produce a sort of soot-like material. And the C60 is in there. So that's what I'm going to talk, to, uh, talk about today. Now, this is the apparatus that I'm using at the moment in the lab. And uh, you can see there's a glass bell jar here. We usually cover it up because, uh, as you'll see, it gets very hot and it's also run under low pressure. And the whole thing is water-cooled underneath with tubing and things to keep the whole thing cold. And what you've got, basically, rather than having two carbon rods uh, touching each other, I've got a vertical rod, which I think you can see here, and it's touching uh, a piece of carbon at the bottom there. It's a bit dark, but you can see that the, you can see the vertical thing is actually a carbon rod. There's a close-up for you. So uh, we've got a carbon rod here, and there's a carbon base here. And, and by wiring it up from the outside, we can put an electrical current through this carbon rod and vaporize it, basically. So what we do is we set up the apparatus. We put an O-ring seal over there to uh, stop the air getting in. We put the glass bell jar in. We pump this down uh, to get rid of the air, and we put helium in there and we pump it out and we put some more helium in there and we pump it out and we put some more helium in there. The idea is to get rid of every trace of oxygen in there because obviously if you, if you vaporise carbon and there's oxygen, it's just going to burn. So what you do is you fill this up with helium and you apply uh, a large current to that uh, carbon rod, about 100 or 200 amps at 50 volts, so an enormous amount of electricity. And at the contact, you get a spark, and that spark is several thousand degrees, maybe two to three thousand degrees, and it vaporizes the carbon to produce lots of fluffy black soot-like material. And I've got a little video here where we can show what's going on. So initially, you can see the glass bell jar is completely clear and beautifully clean. We apply an electrical current, you get this incredible white arc, and you can actually see the carbon being sputtered off from the electrode now. And, uh, and it's covering the inside of that glass bell jar with soot. And then when it's finally finished, you can see there that the, uh, the bell jar is covered in a black soot-like material. You basically um, let some air into that, let it cool down first, let some air into that, and open up the apparatus and scrape out the black soot. And what you get produced is, uh, I made some earlier here, so this little glass jar is full of this sort of black soot-like material. And so this is pure carbon. We know that because we're vaporizing pure carbon rods. And we know that there's helium in there. There's no oxygen, so we don't expect any oxides in there. This is just going to be vaporized carbon, which has come back and formed this black sooty material. And it turns out that 5 to 10% of this black sooty material is the beautiful C60 molecule, the buckyballs. So then what you do is you take some of this soot, and just to prove to you what's in it, I've taken a small amount of this soot and uh, put it in a mass spectrometer to weigh out all the products, all the stuff that's in it. And what you get when you put this material into the uh, machine is actually a very beautiful spectrum. You see here an enormous great peak over here for C uh, corresponding to 720 mass units. That's what C60 should weigh if you could weigh it out in terms of hydrogen atoms. You get an enormous peak here. That's showing C60 in there. But you also see that C70's in there. That's like a sort of rugby ball shaped uh, buckyball. And actually, if you look more carefully, there's a whole range, whole family of different cages that this, in this black, fluffy, soot-like material. Now, it turns out that these fullerenes are soluble in uh, solvents such as toluene or benzene. So if you just shake it up with a bit of the solvent, you can dissolve all these molecules out and then purify them. This is going way back to 1989, 1990. And the black thing here you see uh, that I'm working on is a scaled up version, rather than, rather than having a glass bell jar, which is a little bit fragile and not very uh, large. Actually, what you've got here is a stainless steel apparatus, which is all water cooled, and we can put in carbon rods from one side to the other, and we can put in very long carbon rods and vaporize more and more carbon to make more and more soot. And this way, we can sort of scale up the whole process. So, what you do then is that you take black soot material. You wash it in toluene, all the fullerenes, all the buckyballs dissolve out, and then you can put that 
uh, material onto a thing called a chromatography column and separate out all the different shapes. You get beautiful coloured solutions. Um, this is uh, the Buckyball group way back in the 1990s. This is Harry Croto here, uh, Roger Taylor and Dave Wharton and myself and Ali Abdul Sada. And um, we found that if you took some of this material that you get from the search and you put it on what's called a chromatography column, um, what happens is the material is absorbed onto the column and as you flush solvent into this machine, the buckyballs actually pass through the column quicker than the C70 or the, the, the larger fullerenes. And so actually what can happen is you can put the raw material on here and they all separate out into the different shapes. And the first colour that comes through is C60, which is a beautiful magenta colour. I think you can see that here. Uh, this is pure C60 in toluene. And then all the other fullerenes come out by this beautiful technique called chromatography. So basically C60 is very simple to make. You just vaporise pure carbon. If you do it in air, it will burn. So you don't do it in air, you do it under helium. Uh, you get a black, fluffy, soot-like material. Uh, the fullerenes will dissolve out using solvents and then you can use chromatography to get the pure fullerenes and then you can start doing your chemistry. If you want to know any more information, then go to this website and you'll find more information about the whole process.